Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Hello, everybody. This is Tuesday's edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, thank you so much, sir. We receive your word today. We open our hearts. We open our minds for revelation from heaven. We are determined to only say what we hear you say and only do what we see you do. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join me in welcoming Jerry Savelle again to this broadcast today? Thank you, sir. I th- hey, we got in some stuff uh, yesterday. Amen. Now, hang on just a second. I'm going to do this. We, we got to get right back where you were. Free study notes. Starting with this week's broadcast, we're making the notes for our teaching here th- today available right now. Go to kcm.org notes. The study notes will include the, the teaching points, scriptures, prayers, um, just everything that goes on here. And you can just, you can follow it along. Amen. And just yeah, and then keep these things, file them away, teach, teach Sunday school with them, praise God, or just get them out and study them from time to time. This, this is a good awesome. thing, Jerry. Praise Amen. God. Now, you. Me, I'm you. ready. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday's program went too fast. Oh, it is too fast and it quit too quick. That's right. Man, well, we were talking about how that we have entered into, I believe, the greater glory that's yeah. been prophesied. The glory of this latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. And I believe we've entered into it. Now, we're not in a full thrust, but we are in the room. And the Lord said to me, if you'll press for it, it'll come. Yeah. And so I believe one of the keys to pressing for it is to hunger for it. You know, he told me um, through Brother Hagin. Brother Hagin turned and looked at me one day and he said, you use, the, uh, this is the Lord, thus saith the Lord, you use what I've given you and I will increase it tenfold. Mm-hmm. And then I will increase it tenfold again and it will continue to grow. Yeah. But you got to use it. That's right. And we're, we're right there right now. If you get hungry, uh, do it by faith. I don't care whether you feel anything. By faith, I'm hungry for the Word. Amen. I am a hungry man. I hunger for you, God. Now, when you, as you say it by faith, oh man, I'm telling you, it just starts building on the inside of That's you. Right. Say it all day, every day. I mean, I don't care how... Jesus said, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you will be filled. Yeah, that's true. And you know, a lot of people are saying, well, as soon as the Lord stirs me up, boy, I'm going to get hungry again. It's not the way it works. No, it doesn't. The Bible talks about a man stirreth up himself. Yes, it does. So you, you have to stir yourself up, stir that hunger up again. And once you do, I mean, in fact, you don't, have to, you don't have to reach the full level of it. Just show God. Just give Him indication you're hungry. He'll go with that. Oh, sure. You know, draw nigh unto me, I I'll will draw, draw nigh, nigh unto you. you. Yes, so sir. it's our responsibility to take the first step. You were preaching in Happy Conwell's Church in Little Rock this years ago. Yeah. And um, Gloria and I were there. At, and in, in fact, if I remember right, I think you and Carolyn flew over there with us and we all went to church together that night. If it's one year, I'm thinking about it, it was Happy had surprised me with a 30 year anniversary celebration. You preached, I was so tired. I'm sitting yeah, there the one. <laughs> like this. And you preached on stir yourself up now. Yeah. And it got hold of me. And I said, oh God, forgive me. I, I, I'm, I, 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 I apologize to you, sir. I said, I'm stirred up. I turned to Gloria. I said, I said, I'm stirred up now. <laughs> and Carolyn was sitting there. I said, Carolyn, I'm stirred up now. And, and I just started saying, I'm stirred up now. Mm-hmm. Glory to God, I'm stirred up. Jerry, before that service was over with, all that tired weariness was gone. Yeah. I was stirred up. I mean, I was ready to hit the road again. <laughs> Amen. That's the way it hits you. That's the way it does, doesn't yeah. it? it? Once again, you take the first step and God says, you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. So he's not the one holding out. He's just waiting on us to get ourselves stirred people up and think hungry people again. People think they're waiting on God, don't they? Yeah. He's waiting on us. He's been waiting on you all this year. That's right. Paul said 
as we were talking about yesterday, that even after he had known God all these years and probably knew him more intimately than any other person on the planet at that time, and yet he said, my determined purpose, Philippians 3.10 from the Amplified Bible, my determined purpose, even after all these years of walking with him, is that I may know him that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with Him, perceiving and recognizing, and I love this phrase, the wonders of His person more strongly and more clearly. You know, when you get to know somebody and you discover you really like that person, you want to be around them yeah. as often as you can. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, that's, that's what happened to me with you back there in 1969. Uh, you brought the word that changed my life. And, uh, you know, I could hardly, you know, Carolyn had to drag me to that first meeting. But the second one, I was the first one there, you know, uh, because what I saw in you and your ministry attracted me and I wanted more. And so now I'm not, I'm not being forced to go, beg to no, go. No, I'm no. on the front row and I can't get enough. Well, later when the Lord directed you to bring me into your ministry, and I got to travel with you in those early days, then what I'm doing, I'm experiencing more of the wonders of your person. In other words, I'm getting to know you on a different level than just the preacher on the platform and me Mm -hmm. as one of the members of the audience. Now I'm getting to know you in a more intimate way. Uh, I'm, I'm getting to see how you operate. I get to see how you use your faith. And of course, that was inspiring to Carolyn and I. And our attitude became, if we do what Kenneth and Gloria do, um, do it just the way they do it, then we'll get the same results they get. Oh, yeah. And we did, praise God. And you know, Jerry, that translates into the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. Because if you act like Him and you stay in His Word, and it, you will begin to think like Him. Yeah. And when you begin to think like the Word thinks and you begin to act like He acts and say what He says, you've got the same Spirit of God in you. He yeah. said it's the Father that dwells within. He does the work. That's right. You get the same results He did and that's what He intended to do. Mm-hmm. I heard Bill Winston say this and it, uh, it, it really impacted my spirit. Bill said, Jesus... Uh, came to the earth as the sample son. He's the example Mm -hmm. of what a man baptized in the Holy Ghost, walking by faith on the Word of God, can accomplish and should accomplish. And Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, Mm -hmm. because I'm going to the Father. So he set this up for us to act like Him. We're not taking away from Him. One guy, you remember that guy that said, ah, man, said, so-and-so's ruined. He got to running around with that Copeland and they're both running around everywhere trying to act like little Jesuses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, thank you, sir. I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But see, he thought, he thought we, were, we were being egotistical and taken away from, yeah. from some kind of robbery of Jesus' deity. He didn't function here on this earth as God. He functioned as a man who needed God. He needed the Holy Spirit. He said, he said I can do nothing of myself. He didn't say, I won't do it. He said, I can't. Yeah. And this is available to us, Jerry. Mm-hmm. And it's more so right now than ever before. That's right. And we need it more than ever before. More, more than ever. This world we live in has ever. gone nuts. More than ever. And they need, if this, if this planet is going to turn to God, they need more yeah. than just the preaching of good sermons. They've got to see demonstrations and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's what did it in the book of Acts. This gospel That's what's going to do it in our day. Will be preached to all nations. And then the end will come. As... Evidence. Evidence, yeah. It's evidence. Mm -hmm. To the natural man, this is evidence. Well, that's the way it started in the book of Acts. Absolutely. They they preached Christ, and there were signs and wonders and miracles that followed them. The book of Acts, theologians tell us, historians tell us, cover about the first 30 years of the church existence. From Acts 1 all the way to the end of the chapter. 
they preach Christ. They never change their message. They preach Christ. And as a result of it, there were signs, wonders, and miracles wrought by the hands of the apostles all the way through. It didn't stop until the church got religious. They started bringing in pagan uh, uh, mm-hmm. activity mm-hmm. into the church. And, and next thing you know, they're not preaching Christ anymore. And the church became powerless. But then God wasn't going to stand for that. He raised up men like Martin Luther going in there and digging out the Word of God, come out preaching against the apostasy and the, against the, the uh, religious tradition. And man, Reformation came. You know, a great awakening came yeah, after that. Yeah. And then God just continued right on through the ages. And now He's, he's here with us. And it's time for our visitation. It's time for us to take this to the next level. The book of Acts is not a complete book until we finish our part. Well, that's right. Yeah. That's absolutely And it's, it's going to close the same way it opened, with us preaching Christ, and signs and wonders and miracles were wrought by the hands of those who lived in that day. And that's oh, us. Glory Hallelujah. God. Glory Amen. God. But here was, here was Paul. The Bible said God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. I think all of that had everything to do with his hunger for more of God. Well, you know it did. And he says right here, His hunger and his faith that Jesus would do it. That's right. Yeah. But he says, I, I have a determined purpose, and that is, I will never be satisfied until I experience more of him. Mm-hmm. Now, that ought to be our purpose today. Yes, it is. That I will never be satisfied until I experience more of him. And then the, uh, the second verse that really uh, spoke to me back in those early days and continues to do so right now is 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. And this is Paul writing. He said, In my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration oh, yeah. of the Spirit and the power. So I, I wrote in my notes way back there in 1969 that my two greatest hungers will be, number one, increased knowledge of God and His Word, and number two, to see greater manifestations of His Spirit. I'm not going to be satisfied with just preaching. I, I love preaching, but God's best is that it be accompanied with the demonstration of the Spirit and in power. The Bible Lord. says that as Jesus taught, what happened? The power of the Lord was present to heal. Yeah. He set the example. Yeah. As we preach Christ, then the power of the Lord should be present to heal. That's once again the way it started in the book of Acts, and it should be that way in our ministries today. And I believe we've come back to it. I believe we're coming back to the book of Acts in those b- basic principles, and that is preach Christ. Well, what does it mean to preach Christ? Now you think about it. The, the, the times where I have seen you and, and I know in my own ministry as well, where I've seen the greatest manifestation of the Holy Ghost and demonstrations of His power is when we preach Christ. And when you preach Christ, you've got to preach His death. You've got yes. to preach His resurrection. Yes. You've got to preach redemption. You've got to preach the blessing. You've yeah. got to preach total freedom. When we're preaching those messages, that's when the power of the Lord is present to yes, Him. God didn't call us. Now, I know... Might get some ugly letters on this. But God didn't call us to just be motivational speakers. And a lot of ministry today has been more of a motivational speech. I mean, you could go hear the same thing at an Amway convention or some other, and I'm not, I'm not knocking that. I, I, I'm, I'm very much involved in motivational speaking. I speak to professional football teams. Oh, yeah. I've spoken yeah, to Fortune 500 companies, and that's, that's correct in that setting. But what, what the church needs to hear again today and what the world needs to hear is Christ. Preach Christ. The Bible says, and Philip preached Christ, and the entire city saw miracles and was full of joy. Well, and to, you remember when Brother Hagin uh, referred to the visitation that he had of Jesus. And Jesus actually took him to heaven. And he put his finger in the palm of each one of Brother Hagin's hands. Yeah. 
And Brother Hagin said his hands went, started burning. And he said, now, uh, this is, he talked about it, this is uh, gifts of healings and so forth. He explained to him that this was anointing in his hand and so forth, in both hands. But he said to him, he said, now, you go and you tell people you saw me. That's right. And you tell them that I anointed you and you tell them that I told you to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Yes. Well, Jesus, when he was on the earth, preached everywhere he went, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me right. for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and, and went through the... the uh, in, in Luke 4, 18, that whole 18th mm -hmm. verse there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach. Well, what happens when you preach Christ? Translate it. Christ is the word anointed right. or anointing. Mm -hmm. And you're preaching the anointed one and his anointing. That's right. Now, where people have drawn back, I had a, an experience with some people, very close, sweet people, my goodness, and she, they diagnosed her with cancer, and we said, oh, glory to God, you've got to go to Brother Hagin's meeting as people get healed of cancer there. I mean, by the dozens, and, and years later, by the hundreds, and I don't know, maybe even thousands before he went home be the Lord. So uh, they went. They came back. We were so excited. Oh, we want to hear the report. They came over the house. She said, I have not sat in the presence of, of such an egotistical man in all of my life. Hmm. Now see, she didn't believe what he said when he said, the Lord said to me yeah. to tell it. And he told it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happened at his hometown they didn't believe what he said. Yeah. And there he could do That's no right. mighty works. That's oh, right. I tell you, Jerry, the Spirit of God was so grieved. And, and I'm hearing that and I'm sitting there. I, I just, what are you going to say? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I didn't say anything. And it wasn't long till, till she, she went. Now, of course, she went right on to be with the Lord. I mean, yeah. it doesn't that. But she didn't have to, she didn't have to be right. sick. She could have finished out her time. But the point being this, when you preach Christ, People receive it, they get it. Mm -hmm. They don't, they won't. Yeah. Jesus said that. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. What's the gospel? Gospel of Christ. Yeah. And he said, these signs will follow them that believe. That's right. Not the ones that don't mm -hmm. believe. They'll lay hands on the sick, they'll cover and so forth. And those that don't, won't. Yeah, it's that simple. It's that simple, that's what he said. So we're right back in there again. Yeah. And it, it's time to just stir your faith up and start your start this, this this confessing tool of faith, your mouth, your tongue, make that thing do its duty and begin to speak the word of faith and begin to receive from God and get excited about it. Brother Hagin yeah. said it's the words you get excited about, boys. That's the one that works. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. You know, uh, talking about the anointing in Brother Hagin's hands, when, when I first began ministering and I'd lay hands on people, my, my girls were both real little. And of course, Jerry and born in 68, Terry in 69. So I came to the Lord in 69. So they're, they're real little. Yeah. But, you know, two years into this, um, uh, we'd go to these little towns to preach. And of course, we only had, we only had enough money for one room. So all four of us <laughs> in there and I'm trying to pray and prepare for the meeting, you know. So in the afternoon, I'd get up and I'd start walking around the room, praying in the Holy Ghost. And the girls would follow me. They'd they follow you around. around the they'd pray in the spirit, you know. Well, I'd get over there That's and pray so for people and they'd see people get healed. And they'd always walk up to me after service and say, Daddy, let's feel your hands. And they'd feel my palms. They said, they're always hot after you play for, pray for people. Well, uh, a <laughs> couple of months ago, out at our church, Man, we had one of them Holy Ghost meetings. I'd lay hands on people. Now, Jerry is 47 years old now, 48. 
And she walked up and said, Daddy, let me feel your hand. Yeah. Said, it's just like it was when we were kids. <laughs> I know, that is Glory so neat. That, that anointing. God, that There's good. nothing like that anointing, and particularly when you know that God wants to take it to another level. Praise God. That's where we're at right Glory now. It's on you right now. Amen. It is on you right now. There's healing happening in the name of Jesus right now. There's somebody in the sound of my voice that has cancer of the throat, and that cancer is dead. Amen. It is dematerializing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sore, bad feet are being healed right now in Amen. the name Praise of Jesus. God. Take it. Just Praise say, that's God. mine. I take it now. Glory Amen. to God. There are those of you that the glory of God is filling up the room where you are right now. I'm telling you, fill in the place. Some of you, some, some of you, it's in the form of the cloud of God and it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Get on your knees. Begin to praise and Hallelujah. worship God. I mean, Thank this is God. it, my, my brother and sister. This is what we've been believing for. Take it. Amen. Lay hold on it with your faith. Say, I take it now, Lord. Don't beg God for it. It's already done. Move in him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank, thank you, thank you Heavenly thank you, Father. Father, for healing the people. Amen. Amen. Glory Praise to God. God. Glory to God. Praise Glory God. to God. Someone Glory to God. Experience the loss of hearing in their left, uh, right ear in particular. And that is completely opening up. There's damage here in the eardrum. That is mm. completely opening up. And you are whole, you are free. You can check Glory yourself out right now in Jesus' name. Hearts are being healed. Yes, right they are. Now. Hallelujah. New hearts. New hearts. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Thank Jesus. Thank you, Father. Somebody scheduled for a heart transplant, and you have a new heart in you right now. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father. Glory Thank to God. you, Father. And those that are receiving, call somebody right now. You, 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 you've received it. Call somebody and testify to it. Call our office and testify. Hallelujah. To it. Praise God. Let somebody know your testimony is so important. It is so important Amen. to help you stay in faith and hold on to what you have. Glory Praise be God. to God. Praise God. Oh, glory. Brother Copeland, there's a, there's a wife that's been praying for her husband who's been an alcoholic. He's got a liver condition and God is not only healing him, but bringing him into the knowledge of the truth and the man will walk with God for the rest of his life. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Ooh. Amen. Hallelujah. My, 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 we're out of time. Don't, that don't mean anything. Don't, don't let it stop. You just keep praising God. Hallelujah. Just keep praising and worshiping God. Just keep praising and worshiping God. Amen. Cut the TV off right now if you want to and just praise and worship God. Just stay in His presence. Stay Hallelujah. in His presence. And Brother Jerry and I will be back in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed this teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org notes.